Alright. <laughs> Camera rolling. Welcome to Challenge Round of I <laughs> Love it. <laughs> On the floor is Luz Magdaleno Flores, a badass who thinks she knows it all. Oh my God. All right, Lupita. The kids want to know, and the kids don't like being called. The students. The youth want to know, what is the history of zines? Where did those come from? Are we really doing it right now? Yeah! yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One, two, three. The youth want to know, where do zines come from? What are zines? What do you say to that? Some people call them zines first. Zines! Yeah, so usually when, if we were in your classroom, this is the part where we would be like, who here has ever made a zine? Who here has ever <laughs> read a zine? Or bought a zine, or been to an event where there's zines, um, and we're surprised by how many people don't know. So hopefully you don't, you do know, and if you don't know, now you know. So the easiest answer for me to tell people is that a zine is an independent magazine, and so it's something that people make um, by themselves without like major funding, um, which can change now. Now you can get micro grants to make zines and stuff. Um, to create like a publication. Look into those, get that money, get that sh money. Um, but I think in BPP we love to talk about Ida B. Wells being one of the first zinesters in the Americas to publish a zine, anti-lynching zines, right? Absolutely. Um, not only anti-lynching zines, but she was an investigative journalist for a lot of the struggles, mm -hmm. talking about a lot of the struggles that were happening in the black community at that time. Um, when we talk about the first zine that she put out, um, it was actually a pamphlet that was uh, introduced at the World Fair, uh, also called uh, the, Amer the Colum World Columbian Exposition, mm -hmm. and it was uh, held in 1893, which is a really, really long time ago if you think about it. Um, but this pamphlet was talking about how um, black folks were able to attend the World Fair uh, but, and work at the World Fair and spend money at the World Fair, uh, but they weren't given a platform. Weren't given a platform. Uh, their contributions were not talked about at all. And um, that was an injustice. Uh, some people uh, usually in class like ask what the fair was. Just think about it like a uh, big, uh, science fair but for America to show off um, what they've gotten done in the last 400 years so it was a celebration of the 400 years uh, anniversary that Col Columbus discovered America Guacatela. yeah so uh, this event already rooted in some uh, oppressive uh, negativity uh, and altered history uh, which is something that we encounter a lot when we're talking about uh, mainstream media, things that we learn uh, even in school, even without even knowing it. Um, so we think it's really important that zines um, be a way for us to tell a story and contribute to history uh, in a way that doesn't require the validation from institutions uh, like the, pub the publishing world. Uh, sometimes I talk about um, Harry Potter and how much money it took to make Harry Potter and how it wasn't just one person and a zine can be made by one person and be just as amazing as a zine made by 30 people. Impactful. Um, yeah. Lupita, what are the three A's? So the three A's of zine making, uh, characteristics of zine making are uh, A, affirming, which means that zines can affirm the experiences of other people. Uh, think about affirmation as uh, validation, uh, knowing that you're not the only one that is experiencing something, uh, knowing that you're not the only person that believes a certain thing. Um, so zines are really helpful to affirm other people in their experiences, let them know that they're not alone. Um, I grew up uh, with a brother that was incarcerated for t 10 years uh, and being very young and, and knowing that and visiting them and 
uh, not having any media, any content, any story, any book, anything that expressed that experience um, made me feel really alone in that. Uh, so now I feel like, you know, if there was a zine or something that could be geared towards young people, um, talking about mass incarceration, talking about um, their experience of having a family that member that's incarcerated, they would feel less alone in that. Um, so I think that that's really important for people that have that experience to be affirmed. Um, and that's kind of my example of how zines for me would have really helped in being affirming to my experience. Um, the next A is autonomous. You want to talk about autonomous? Um, autonomous means that you control what the message is. Um, so is autonomous. Um, zines are very DIY, so you get to like create what you want to create. And that's the beauty of it. Like you can look at zines and not one is alike. Like everything is so different from the way they format it, from the way they, you know, cut the paper or what they include in it. And it's beautiful. Um, so having that as a medium is like, it's cool because you're able to do so many things without having to like follow some type of template. Um, yeah, and that's really important, especially as young people that are taking this uh, virtual workshop, I guess. Um, you know, we're not going to tell you exactly what your zine needs to look like. We're not going to give you all these really strict uh, boundaries and parameters. You know, I think it's really important for people to have the ability to create what they want to create without those limitations. Um, so zine making for us is really amazing because it's such a uh, blank canvas for us to put our ideas and our vision out there of what the world should look like, of what our world has looked like, um, and make each other feel like that's real and like uh, we matter uh, because we do. So the last A is accessible. Um, so when I talk about accessible, I think about um, if you're able to get somewhere, if you're able to know something, experience something, um, and zines are extremely accessible, uh, especially if you are on a budget and you need, um, you know, you need to take care of other things and you need uh, an art form that doesn't cost you a whole lot of money. Um, some art forms are extremely, extremely expensive to get, you know, the tools and the equipment and everything. And um, so zine making is something that anyone can do. All you need is like a piece of paper and a pen. Um, and that's a really beautiful thing as well because it removes some of those limitations and makes that uh, more accessible. Yeah, and like printed, printing um, does cost money, um, but you are able to find like copying machines for you know lower prices. Libraries sometimes will charge like five cents a page, which is just more affordable. Um, the other thing we like to talk about is like maybe people that have printers can print for you, you know, schools, maybe teachers can help you out if possible. Like, you know, this is a project, so definitely be able to print it uh, at school is a good thing. Um, and also with printing them, like you could sell them and make money off of them. That's kind of what we do to keep our organization organization going. And, you know, it's just like extra income. Also giving them out for free. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's a, another thing that's really amazing about zine making and the culture that um, we have is that it's, um, you know, we're a team, we're like a family, we um, collaborate and collaboration is a huge part of uh, zine culture. And I think that the fact that we do collaborate has helped us um, fund and, you know, keep the printer printing uh, our projects. Um, so it's really nice to have uh, partners in that creative process knowing that we can make something together but we also support each other to make things separately so um, some of our zines are collaborative zines where we did a call for submission um, and it features several different zinesters uh, some of our zines are independent and they're made by uh, only one of us um, and I think that that's really important as well to both be individual but also be part of a collective um, so those are the three A's affirming, autonomous, accessible, um, and those are just kind of the three staple characteristics of what makes a zine what it is, um, beyond just you know what it physically looks like. Um, we showed you some footage of different zines. You can see that they are different sizes, different colors, made with different materials, uh, bigger, smaller, all those things. Um, and I think that that's also really important is uh, 
zines are also accessible because you are able um, to get your message across without having like a 15 page paper or like a, you know hundreds and hundreds of pages in a book um, it's something a little more sweet and short and easier to digest um, personally uh, zines are really accessible to me because I have a learning disability and um, that affects my focus so when I was in school um, I would be reading these books and I would lose my place and it would take me forever to read just a few chapters so I was really struggling um, and I didn't I never knew why so I ended up being diagnosed just like a year ago um, so me knowing that kind of helped me feel less bad about you know being a slow reader reading at a different level and stuff um, and also uh, that made me fall you know in love with books and, and, and reading even though it is a struggle but zines are easier for me to read um, it's not just words, it's also photos and artwork and uh, layout design. So there are just so many different kinds of artwork um, and, and art forms that come together to make a zine. Uh, some of you know our zines have a lot of photography in them, some of them have poetry, um, so they're really versatile as well. Yeah, like for me, um, I'm not a great writer. I hate like, you know, like in school I hated sitting down and having having to write a paper so I don't express myself well um, with writing or poetry but I love to take photos so like that's the beauty about zines also is that it doesn't have to be one certain thing like a lot of um, our members are uh, poets poets <laughs> um, and I am not so like uh, what so like that's the cool part about art is that you can create your own thing and develop it any way you want and try different things and I think zines express that beautifully. Absolutely and language is really powerful but images like Im uh, uh, pictures worth a thousand words right. Um, so it's also we are valuing equally valuing everyone's art everyone's art form we're not saying that a photographer you know tries harder than a poet or anything like that we're really respecting that all of us together um, make a zine what it is. So we're gonna keep on going from here. All right. So I challenge you to create your own zine. It could be one page, it could be five pages, eight pages. We're gonna show you how to make an eight page zine. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you can also do online. I know right now it's probably not a good time to share um, physical copies, but you could also practice. Canva is a great resource to create your own PDFs and books. Um, they have templates for magazines, so yeah. Absolutely. So we're gonna share some uh, different options for how you can make your zine. We're gonna show you a mini zine tutorial, um, and but also just talk a little bit more about Canva and the options on there. Um, again, just teaching you guys how to um, make this thing that we have been making and has really like enriched our life and enriched our creative process and how we're developing as artists so um we're really exciting excited to share this art form yeah and it's a huge community chicago has a huge zine community um we can tell you a list of other zinesters uh people of color zinesters um so yeah absolutely